Hi, Hiram here. I'm going to do a simmer, another simmer test on this uh, Out D stove. I'm not going to use the full name, but you know what I mean. Uh, I've had a bunch of people asking me, okay, I showed you the simmer rings. Now show me what it does. So I thought I'd do that today. I got a uh, really interesting idea from Flash Geiger. Flash Geiger said you could turn off the jets by removing the inner aluminum sleeve, although it would have to be cool first. Maybe without the uh, sleeve in here, uh, well, it also said, or Flash Geiger also said that maybe without this sleeve you wouldn't get enough feedback, thermal feedback to keep it burning. But uh, that would be interesting to see. What Flash is talking about is there's a sleeve here that comes out, although I did try to take it out one time with it hot, with it hot, and wow, it wasn't easy. So that's something you could try, but once it heats up, it gets a little sticky. But just to show you, <clears throat> just dump some alcohol in here, leaving the sleeve out. So when you do that, then there's no pressure buildup for it to come out the jets. But I just wanted to give you a idea what the flames look like. Can you see this? Now I'm not sure that might be considered a simmer, but as it heats up it's going to get to be more and more. Okay, so interesting idea, but I, I'm not real confident about trying to take the liner out with the stove hot. Now if you can take, you know, snuff it and then let it cool down then remove it, that probably would be a good idea to try. But what I'm going to do today is <clears throat> John over at Flat Cat Gear sent me this wattage chart where you have a delta temperature, a change in temperature versus time, and then you can figure out what the wattage is, how much power a stove is putting out. So what I'm going to do is a simmer test here using my simmer ring too. I'll give you the sizes down below. It's just the top of a can cut off and I punched a hole in here with the punch that I have but if you have other tools you could also do that. So let me light this. Now I'm not really having to wait for the jets to come up but I need for it to be hot enough that I can put the simmer ring on. <clears throat> now here's my water. So I'm not going to do a boil test here. I'm just going to run it for 10-15 minutes and see how much the temperature rises in that time. And then that will give me the wattage or how much power this is putting out. So my water's not really prepped. How cold is it? <clears throat> this is from the refrigerator. So it's down in the 50s. Okay, hopefully you can see this, see the jets going. Let me try slipping on the ring, there we go. So that cuts that down. Not setting exactly flat here. Let me just tap that, there we go. Okay, so I've got water, doesn't matter how much. Starting at 50 degrees, and let's just let this run for a while. Okay, I'm about six and a half minutes into the test. The temperature's up to 89 degrees. Uh, because I was doing something different here, I forgot to start the timer. So what I had to do is I restarted it when it got to 60 degrees. Uh, I think you can see that it's a very small flame here. The distance from the top of the burner to the bottom of the pot is only about three-eighths of an inch or 9.8 millimeters. A nice small flame. I'll let this run for a couple more minutes to get it up to a difference of say 40 degrees and then I'll come back and we'll find out what the wattage was. So be right back. There we had 98, 99. Let's see when it gets to 100 that'll be a difference a delta of 40 degrees. Come on. 
There we go. 949. Okay. So, like I said earlier, I had to re... I forgot to set the timer because I'm doing things a little different here. Uh, so I started the timer at 60 degrees to up to 100. That's a 40 degree difference. So, and it was in nine and a half minutes. So this is by the nine and a half minutes, say 10 by 40 degrees. This comes out to 73.3 watts of power. 73.3 watts. That's how much heat that the stove is putting out according to John's chart. So that was on with the simmering 73.3 watts. <clears throat> on the earlier tests I had two boil tests and they both came out to about the same time. Uh, two cups of water, which this was two cups of water, it was a measured water. Two cups of water starting at 60 degrees came to a boil in 6 minutes 12 seconds. So that's 212 minus 60, 152 degrees in 6 minutes. The highest this goes is 150 in 6 minutes. Works out to 458.3 watts. So that's quite a difference. 73.3 versus 458. I think that's a simmer. And it's, you know, it is putting heat in. I mean, it's rising just slowly. So this might be a good simmer to use for it. Now, if you didn't like having the big holes, you could also always punch out other ones like this. This is some old thing that I was playing with. Five smaller holes, two holes. Let's see what happens here. Can I take that off? Yep. <clears throat> okay, hopefully you can see the flames. They're not very big. Let's see what happens when I slip this five hole one on. Got to let it heat up a little bit, otherwise it'll put the flame out. Ah, it put the flame out anyway. Okay, so I hope that helped those that were asking about this. I think this is a, a good a viable anyway simmering to use it's just a can that's been cut off now it's up to you what size you use again I'll put the dimensions down below but it's just a can lid a little warm can lid that I cut off put a punch the hole in it and went to town and it weighs practically nothing compared to the original cap so I mean you could pack that one in there it's not like using this cap this snuffer that they have on here it's not like you can pack alcohol in here so I'm not sure what the use of it is you could use something like that and cut down your weight uh oh so I gotta get going here I thank you for watching I thank Flash Geiger for his input on that I thank you for watching I look forward to your input Questions, remarks, helpful suggestions, and as always, watch from my buddy Max. Bye now.